Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about elasticity of supply. So we did elasticity of demand and the concepts are similar. Today we're just going to apply that to supply. So elasticity Whether you're talking about elasticity of supply or elasticity of demand, elasticity is always talking about the relationship between price and quantity. Okay, the relationship between price and quantity. And the question you're always asking when you talk about elasticity is, as price changes, how much does quantity change? Okay, so as price changes, how much does quantity change? All right, and today we're talking about this as applied to supply. So in here, we would insert So the word supply. As price changes, how much does the quantity supply change? So, elastic. So, what does elastic mean in terms of supply? So, when a good is elastic, what this means in terms of supply, a good has elastic supply, this means that as price changes, as we'll, we'll be specific, as price increases, quantity supplied increases a lot, all right? As price goes up, quantity supplied increases a lot, okay? So this would be a situation, and we know, by the way, that as price increases, suppliers want to supply more of the good, right? They would prefer to because it would make them even more money, but can they is the question. If we're talking about a farm, for example, and a farmer can either grow blueberries or strawberries, and one season they learn that blueberries are selling for double the price as before, that farmer can very easily and effectively grow more blueberries than before because uh, this, this is elastic, meaning that if a farmer knows blueberries are going to sell for a higher price, they simply make more of them, right? You can, you can plant strawberries or you can plant blueberries. All you have to do is acquire the seeds. It's not difficult. You could acquire, acquire either seed and plant them. And that would be an example of elastic, all right? So elastic supply would be uh, like blueberries. If the price of blueberries went down a lot one year, no problem. Farmers would just stop growing them. They would grow strawberries instead or peaches instead or apples instead, right? Or wheat instead. I mean, it obviously wouldn't be good for business, but they would be able to produce a lot less if the price went down. And if the price goes up, they can produce a lot more, right? Okay, so that would be elastic. An example would be blueberries. As price goes up, quantity supplied goes up a lot. So let's take a look now at an example that's just the opposite, okay? So... Let's change this over to the word inelastic. Should probably spell it correctly. Might be an important place to start. So the word inelastic, what does that mean in economics? So if we know that elastic supply means that when price goes up, quantity supplied goes up a lot, well, then inelastic would be just the opposite, right? As price increases, quantity supplied goes up by a little, all right? So as price goes up, quantity supplied goes up by a little, all right? So keep in mind, obviously, the quantity supply is not going down. That wouldn't make any sense. But it only goes up by a little bit if the good is inelastic, all right? Now, this one's a little bit trickier to understand, so I'm going to give you an example, and uh, I'm also going to test out my uh, iMovie effects here by putting in some images. Hopefully, this works. Um, but let's take the New York Mets, for example. All right? The New York Mets are a baseball team. Obviously, they play in Queens, and they have a stadium called City Field. 
So, City Field, City Field seats 40,000 people usually, about 41,000 people, okay? So, City Field, Forty-one thousand tickets. That's how many can be sold. And on an average night in Queens, uh, the Mets sell each ticket for about thirty dollars per ticket. Okay, so they sell each ticket for about thirty dollars per ticket, and they are selling forty-one thousand tickets at City Field per night. Now, what happens if the price of tickets went up by a lot? This actually happened when the Mets were in the World Series in 2015, right? The ticket price went up from $30 per ticket up to $900 per ticket. Crazy, right? Well, yeah, it is. Um, but it's the World Series, right? So what could the Mets do? They wanted to sell more. They were figuring out how can we sell more $900 tickets. Um, and here's what they did. All right. So first of all, notice uh, City Field here in this picture. Notice how City Field is has these big uh, empty areas behind home plate on the left and right side. Okay, well, here's what they did for the World Series. They decided to add more seats in these little areas in the corners here, as you can see. And here's how it looked in the World Series. Okay, now that we see that, what we notice is that the Mets were able to add a few more seats. They were able to add 3,000 more seats and they sold, this marker would work, 44,000 tickets for the World Series game, okay? So they did increase supply, but they only increased supply by about seven or eight percent. Meanwhile, the price of tickets went up by, believe it or not, about 3,000 percent. Okay, so as you notice, the price went up by 3,000% and quantity supplied of tickets only went up by 7 or 8%. This would be an example of something called inelastic supply. Why? Because the stadium is constant, right? Whether, whether the ticket prices are high or low, the stadium doesn't change. The Mets could not just invent more seats. Well, I shouldn't say that completely. They did, but they were only able to put a, a few more seats into the stadium. They added 3,000 seats throughout the stadium by doing things like the picture showed. Um, but on a dime, uh, tickets to a baseball game or to a movie, for example, are usually set in stone. Even if ticket prices go up, it's very difficult to increase supply proportionally. That's what we call inelastic supply. Okay, so elastic supply means if the price goes up for a good or service, uh, the company providing that good or service will increase uh, the quantity supplied by a lot. Okay, like Uber, when there's a surge of Uber, um, then drivers hit the road and get going because they want to make that extra buck. Uh, that's pretty elastic. Meanwhile, when you're talking about tickets, uh, it's going to be inelastic supply because the stadium doesn't change. It's very difficult to produce more. Gasoline is known as a little bit similar as well. It's just really difficult, expensive, and expensive to increase the supply of gasoline. Even if ExxonMobil wants to supply more gas to the marketplace, um, you know, it's very expensive for them and time consuming for them to actually put more oil rigs, uh, you know, into activation, pay more people to get out there and do it. So therefore, gasoline is generally seen as an inelastic supply as well. Difficult to produce more even when the price goes up. All right, so hopefully we're seeing the difference between inelastic supply and elastic supply. We can also graph them, which we may do in a later unit, uh, but not quite yet. So I hope this helps. And uh, as always, message me if you need any more clarification. Have a good day.